Welcome to my 15 minutes live. Let's get the timer going. So, I've been thinking about the term third world country. And Africa as a whole, the continent Africa as a whole is regarded as a third world country. With South Africa being the southern tip of Africa, so I guess we also a third world country, or we are regarded as a third world country. So the, the term third world, first, second, and third world, uh, was first used uh, during the Cold War. And countries that were not aligned with NATO at the time was regarded as third world countries. And Africa and countries within Africa has been regarded as third world. But recently, third world has come to mean underdeveloped. Underdeveloped countries, countries that are not well developed like the Western world, Europe, America, uh, the UK. And uh, so it's like if a country's third world is like they way behind in terms of development, technology, infrastructure, the whole tutti. And I was thinking, is South Africa really a third world country? And uh, to be honest with you, I think no. South Africa is not a third world country. Uh, I don't exactly know what, uh, what are being compared. Is it because uh, Africa or South Africa is using technology that has been developed by the Western world. Uh, is it because we are adopting their technology? Uh, we are regarded as a third world country. Is it because uh, we always get the technology late? Uh, for instance, we, we get the, the new iPhone six months after it's been released in the US. And then six months later, it's been released in South Africa. We get it six months later. Does it really make us a third world country? I don't think so. I think uh, the West, the Western world is just using the term third world to prove their, so say their superior, sup, sup, superior, superior, superiority, whatever the case might be. They're just trying to prove that they are superior. They're trying to show that they are more advanced. But they're not really that advanced. They're not really ahead of Africa. And I think they only uh, regard us as a third world country because they evaluate us based on a criteria that they have established to give themselves that edge and that ad 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 advantage. But if we have to rate the rest of the world according to our standard, I think they're third world countries, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, we have certain uh, attributes in Africa that doesn't exist in the rest of the world. And one of those are humanity. I mean, uh, if I say humanity, I'll just give you an example. And I always have to talk about my travels, unfortunately. But I spend a couple of uh, uh, days in, uh, in Europe. Uh, in Paris, uh, this was uh, 2015, and on and off on the trains, and people are not friendly. People on the train don't talk to one another. People on the trains are just sitting there. They look sad. Uh, there's no social interaction uh, on public transport. People are just sitting there, and they don't want to be bothered, and they don't smile. They look unhappy. And uh, in New York, people are very busy. They're up and down. They're always in a rush, wanting to get everybody's on their phone. They've got earpieces in their, in their ears. They want to cut themselves off from everyone else. No one is having a conversation on, on the train. And it's just a hustle and bustle. Here, in Africa, we are social. I mean, you walk past a person and then you greet, hello, how are you? Good, good. Have a good day. So we still greet one another. We talk to one another. We sit at bus stops and we have conversations with strangers. We sit on a train or on a bus and we talk to one another. And we, 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 we have that humanity. Uh, 
uh, although it's slightly shifting also towards you know uh, the European style but in most cases we, we are still that social and, and, and humane people for instance if someone has a flat wheel on the side of the road uh, we would stop and we would help uh, if someone has an injury we would stop and help just today I read that in Cape Town uh, two guys saved a, a young boy from drowning in the ocean I mean the boy went beyond the barriers he was in trouble and these guys just went in and they just saved him and, and it's it's just it's just humane we're just more human than uh, the rest of the world but what makes it so great living in South Africa specifically and uh, this subject now I can see this is going to be a three series because I can't talk about this because I also want to show you I don't want to tell you why it's so great living in South Africa I also want to show you so I want to take you around I want to show you right and then uh, maybe talk about you know how does South Africa compare to the rest of the world so we'll see where this takes us and maybe there'll be some future episodes on the same subject but what makes it so great living in South Africa the one thing is the cost of living cost of living in South Africa is very low in actual fact that is wrong cost of living in South Africa is not low it is correct this is how it should be the cost of living in South Africa is correct cost of living abroad is expensive it's too high it is expensive to live abroad and I'll give you an example uh, in uh, 2017 uh, February uh, I was in Boston and in uh, New York and I remember leaving New York the last day uh, before I hopped on a flight I had a uh, a subway sandwich or a subway style sandwich uh, it was a long roll and with uh, tuna mayonnaise and I had a coffee and that subway sandwich with a coffee uh, cost me around eight to nine dollars right and landing in South Africa a, a few days later I had the same subway style sandwich with a coffee right and it cost me 35 rand now just to give you a comparison of the rand to dollar uh, 15 South African rands uh, give you one US dollar so I had a subway sandwich for 35 rand and that's about two dollars just over two dollars compared to the exact same sandwich with a coffee in uh, New York cost me between eight and nine dollars and that's the difference so cost of living is correct in South Africa I don't think we should be paying any more for a sandwich and a, and a coffee uh, I'll give you another example uh, just returning from uh, Paris France and Dubai uh, I can tell you now that a meal per person is anything between eight euros and uh, 12 euros that's what you pay for a meal so you want a burger with chips or fries as you guys may call it overseas a burger with fries and a cool drink uh, that that will cost you and if you have some additional toppings on there that will cost you between eight dollars eight euros and 12 euros I recently bought uh, for the kids we were around the pool and I went to the local cafe and I got two burgers and chips two burgers and fries and double patties on the burgers so it's double patties and uh, a bunny chow so two burgers and chips double patties with a bunny chow so for you guys that don't know what the bunny chow is it's a it's a loaf of bread that's cut into four pieces so you have you take the quarter uh, we call it a quarter bunny and you remove the soft part of the bread you remain with the crust and then you put a filling in there so it could be chips or fries some meat uh, a bit of salad or uh, uh, cheese or whatever and then you you fill the uh, you put the soft part of the bread and you have this bunny chow so it could be a mutton curry it could be a chicken curry in there but it's a filling with a, a quarter loaf of bread and then you have that so two burgers and chips double patty and a bunny chow that's a meal for three people and that meal while I was waiting uh, for them to prepare the food I had a buddy coke this is a buddy coke so it's a small coke I had a buddy coke and that cost me 43 rand 
and if you convert that to US dollars, that's just under, that's under three dollars to feed three people, three meals, three people for less than three dollars, 43 rand, less than three dollars. I mean, that's value for money, people. In South Africans, we need to appreciate uh, the cost of living of South Africa, right? So that just gives you an indication. And I can guarantee you, you can't find a $3 meal anywhere in Europe, the UK, or uh, in America. There's no way you're going to get a $3 meal for, 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 for $3, a meal, burger and chips. Just no way. Now, I do also agree that the American portions are way bigger than our portions. I don't understand why, because no one can consume a portion that big. Uh, I mean, we also have some nice steaks in South Africa. Uh, we also have your 300 grams and your 500 grams ribs. But the Americans just overdo it with their portions. Their pizza slices are huge, are humongous. I don't know why people eat so much, right? So I agree also that the portions are bigger in America. On the other hand, looking at the steak you would have in South Africa compared to a steak I had in, in Paris, I mean, the, the steak in Paris doesn't compare. It just doesn't compare at all. I mean, in terms of size and juiciness of our steak, their steak is just flat and boring. And their steak don't taste like our steak. Uh, that steak is more, it's got a liver taste. So if you, you know what liver tastes like, that is what their steak tastes like. So value for money, and that would be a 12, 12 euro meal, 10 to 12 euro meal. Compared to South Africa, uh, you would maybe pay 120 rand, uh, which uh, equates to around i don't know 120 bucks 120 rand uh, divided by 16. so yeah that's the that's the difference value for money in south africa property uh, i had a look at properties in uh, paris uh, apartments uh, in the series uh, marne valley area i had a look at property in uh, brooklyn new york and uh, what you're getting for the price is uh, to be honest with you we get much more value for money over here and maybe in the next video i'll take you around my property and so you can see how we live and i'm looking at how they live abroad and how we live here and to be honest with you the quality of living i won't call it quality of life let's just call it the quality of living in south africa is way better uh, than what i've seen in new york or in paris right so and i'll take you around i'll show you my property i'll show you how we live uh, and uh, we're looking at apartments, two, three bedroom apartments in Brooklyn. And uh, they have these, I don't know if you call it houses, but they're like built next to one another. And you don't really have a, a yard. Uh, so it's just like a garage up front. And then you have your own property. They next stack next to one another. And those properties were selling for 180 US dollars to 250 US dollars. I mean, if you look at what they, 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 those properties are selling for compared to what properties are selling for in South Africa and what we get in South Africa. I mean, properties there uh, is about five to six times more expensive for, than properties over here. And if you look at properties we buy over here, it gives you greater value for money. It has a better quality of living than what I've seen abroad. So I think we as South Africans must be grateful for what we have. I mean, if you, if you, if you look at uh, uh, how advanced we are, we're not as advanced as the rest of the world. I mean, we also have great internet speeds. Uh, we have uh, 4G, uh, uh, cell phone networks. Although we do get it uh, six months a year later than the rest of the world, we do have uh, great internet speeds. And I'll show you around. If I show you my property, I'll just show you but of the infrastructure around you so you can see uh, what we have uh, I mean we have uh, we can import any technology we want from China these days uh, I've imported a number of stuff it arrived here uh, in, in five working days so technology wise we are we on par with the rest of the world just want to check time my 15 minutes are almost over but we on par with the rest of the world technology wise I do hope however that our internet speeds could be faster we do have fast internet speeds. I mean, we're talking about gigabits and 10, giga, uh, uh, 10 gigabit speeds. But unfortunately, most of the content that we access is abroad and that throttles us a bit. 
uh, I think the speeds in America or Europe is a bit faster because the content they're accessing is local content. I mean, we've got Netflix, we've got Showmax, uh, we've got TV boxes, we've got smart TVs. So we've got IPTV, uh, we've got uh, uh, Kodi, we've got all that stuff. So there's nothing in America. I mean, the kids are playing PlayStation online. There's nothing that they ever brought that we don't have in South Africa. I mean, South Africa is the the hub of Africa. We're the New York of Africa. Everybody wants to come here. I'll leave it at that. I think there's a follow-up video uh, and uh, I'll talk about more. I'll show you my property and we'll talk about more about what makes it great living in South Africa. That's my 15 minutes live. Thank you for watching and goodbye.